Well, for more on this now, we're going to speak to reporter Noga Tarnopolsky in Jerusalem. Uh, good morning, Noga. Thanks for, for joining us this morning. So, so morning. knowing what we know about this agreement, what do you think is likely to be behind the delay? What are the possibilities? Well, I think we have to just take a step back and note that none of us have seen the agreement. Even some Israeli ministers have not yet seen the agreement. They have simply been told about different parts of it. So what we understand in Israel is that um, the families need not worry that there is a technical issue, but even that hasn't been specified. And, um, you know, when we say that um, it was a delayed from Thursday, for example, again, there were rumors. The air here has been rife with rumors that as of Thursday, Israeli hostages would be released. But in fact, that was never made official. There was never, we are still awaiting any kind of official announcement from Qatar that is supposed to be the, the you know, body announcing the existence of this deal. So we're all kind of, you know, breathing in the ether right now. So uh, Qatar has been, of course, pretty involved, uh, if not the major main actor in this mediation process. But the U.S. has also played a pretty significant role behind the scenes, especially when it comes to the question of hostages uh, being released. So how likely do you think this deal, if it does move forward, would have been without involvement from Washington? How instrumental has the U.S. been? I think um, 100 percent. I, I think it can't be exaggerated. And I actually think that we probably, if we take a step back and we look at President Joe Biden's um, thread, uh, his statements, his tweets last night, I think we have to acknowledge that, in fact, the principal actor and the principal um, mediator that pushed the sides together here has been the United States. And that Qatar, in fact, has the role of being sort of the internationally acceptable spokesperson or proxy for Hamas, a terror group that does not really have legitimacy in the in the international sphere. But I really think um, that we have to acknowledge that the United States has been the number one actor behind this. Does this signal that the hostages are more of a priority than the Israeli government made it seem, at least at the beginning of the war? That is another great question. And I think what we're seeing is simply a shift. I think at the beginning of this war, the Israeli government saw as its number one, uh, maybe sole aim to destroy Hamas that had invaded Israel and murdered more than a thousand citizens. And over the past six or seven weeks, as the families have taken a more public role um, and as their anguish has become really the central part of the kind of it, the debate in Israeli society, the Israeli government has had to shift. And there it found itself having real support from the United States that said it could absolutely assist in getting the hostages freed. As, as a final question for you, Noga, I'd like to know how you think this deal uh, for now, again, pending, you know, confirmation, how it's perceived uh, first by, by relatives of the hostages in general. Is there any division amongst them uh, in terms of, of obtaining a deal and the sacrifices that come with that? And then more generally at large in Israel, how do Israelis seem to, to view it? Israelis are waiting with bated breath just to see any hostages released. There's a feeling right now in Israel of some kind of purgatory. Um, the families have stopped speaking to the media. I have to tell you that the situation in which a terror group, Hamas, is the one controlling the narrative, is the one releasing uh, it when it ever does, the names. Israel hasn't even been able to verify that the names on the list of 10, just 10 hostages that received last night are even alive. So this situation has been torturous for the families, and it, it really has put them in a terrible anguish. And the Israeli public sphere, um, I can't say it feels exactly what the families do, but it is following that. Like, all eyes now are on the families and on if they get any of the kids home. That's the situation. There are divisions, what you allude to exist, but right now there's just this kind of bated breath waiting. All right. We'll see then what comes on Friday, if any, uh, if there's anything new. And in the meantime, Noga Tarnopolsky in Jerusalem, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Take